Hi everyone, as I have promised earlier that I will make a video on the congenital diaphragmatic medical hernia. So here I am today with all the important information regarding our topic, congenital diaphragmatic medical hernia. I am Dr. Sharna Moin and today in this video I am going to talk about different types of congenital diaphragmatic medical hernia, their causes and pathophysiology and in very short about the diagnosis and the treatment. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, also known as CDH, is a birth defect of the diaphragm through which the abdominal contents enter into the thorax and may give rise to different types of complications. Normally, there are four developmental sources of the diaphragm, or it can be said that uh, four structures are needed for the development of the diaphragm, and they are septum transversum, pleuroperitoneal fold, esophageal mesentery and the muscular ingrowth of the body wall. These structures, they come together and fuse with each other to form a complete diaphragm. If somehow one of these structures do not develop or is absent or they do not fuse with each other, then a gap or defect remains. In this picture on the right side, we can see a gap or defect and through this defect, the abdominal contents can easily enter into the thorax and this is how the herniation takes place. Now, these organs in the thorax will compress the thoracic structures like the lungs and the heart. For this compression, the lungs will not be able to grow properly, especially on the side of the compression, and this is known as pulmonary hypoplasia. That means the lungs are underdeveloped and small in size. In this case, when the baby is born, he or she will face uh, difficulty in breathing for this underdeveloped and uh, small sized lung. And also, as the lungs are compressed, the vascular pressure inside the lung that will increase, which is known as pulmonary hypertension. So these two, the pulmonary hypoplasia and pulmonary hypertension, these two conditions are the major causes of death in case of uh, fetus who are suffering from the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Now we are going to talk about different types of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. There are several types of CDH among all. The boctolex hernia is the most common one and uh, apart from the boctolex hernia, we also have the morgagnes hernia, central tendon defect, diaphragm eventration which is not shown here and any other portion of the diaphragm can be congenitally absent. Today in this video, I am going to focus more on the boctolex hernia and on the morgagnes hernia as the incidence of other types of CDH are very low. Now the boctolex hernia. It is the most common manifestation of the congenital diaphragmatic hernia and it accounts for more than 95% cases of all cases of CDH. And boctolex hernia takes place through the boctolex triangle. And this is a triangle situated between the, the lumbar origin and the costal origin of the diaphragm. We know that uh, the diaphragm has three origins, the sternal origin, the costal origin and the lumbar origin. The lumbar origin means this portion of the diaphragm is arising from the lumbar vertebras. So these are the lumbar part of the diaphragm. And the costal origin means the portion of the diaphragm that is originating from the costae or the ribs. And we can see the ribs here, these are the ribs. So this portion of the diaphragm, they are the uh, costal origin of the diaphragm. And this triangle is situated between the lumbar origin of the diaphragm and the costal origin of the diaphragm. This is why this triangle is also known as the lumbocostal triangle. Czech anatomist and pathologist Vincent Alexander Boktalek first accurately described about this triangle. Hence it is known as Boktalek's triangle. Now this triangle is formed due to incomplete closure of the pleuroperitoneal membrane which ultimately leads to incomplete closure of the precardioperitoneal canal. Let me to explain a little. Normally, the thoracic cavity is connected with the abdominal cavity with the pericardio-peritoneal canal. So we can see the pericardio-peritoneal canal on the back side with the blue, yeah, blue, blue arrow marked area. So there are the pericardio-peritoneal canals. So in the upper portion we have the thoracic cavity uh, because we can see the lung bud here. So that means the lungs will develop here. And between the lungs we will have the heart so, uh, so we have the pericardial cavity and the pleural cavity here 
and below we have the abdomen that means the peritoneal cavity so the connecting canal is known as the pericardio peritoneal canal during six week of development pluriperitoneal membrane starts to develop and they ultimately fuse with the other structures like the septum transversum or the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus to close this canal see there is complete closure of the canal but if somehow they do not form or they are absent or they do not fuse with these structures in those cases this canal remains unclosed and the abdominal contents will find their way into the thorax and this defect is situated in the posterior lateral part of the diaphragm you can see this is the posterior part and how do you understand that this is the posterior part of course we can see the growing vertebra here and uh, these are the lumbar vertebras so this is the posterior part of the diaphragm the whole, uh, this defect is situated in the posterior lateral part of the diaphragm hence it is known as the posterior lateral triangle so ultimately we can see this triangle is known as posterior lateral triangle which is also known as lumbocostal triangle or the boctalex triangle and herniation through this triangle is boctalex hernia or lumbocostal hernia or posterior lateral hernia this defect mostly takes place on the right side sorry uh, this is left side so it takes place mostly on the left side they may take place on the right side as well but uh, usually we find this on the left side until date it carries a high mortality rate now the morganese hernia this is a very rare condition accounting for approximately uh, about 2% uh, of all CDH cases in this case there is herniation through the foramen of morganese now what is foramen of morganese these are small natural gaps between the sternal origin and the costal origin of the diaphragm hence this foramen is also known as the sternocostal foramen this is a natural weakness in the anteromedial portion of the diaphragm and, uh, which is caused by the passage of the internal thoracic vessels the internal thoracic vessels they pass from the thoracic cavity through this diaphragm into the epigastric region there they become the superior epigastric vessels I actually googled a lot to find a perfect picture to show you but uh, unfortunately I failed then I just remembered uh, I have a model to show you so here's our model and I'm going to bring the diaphragm right now so you brought the why is it staring like that so creepy anyways let's focus on the diaphragm so here are the oh let's remove the cartilages uh, this is the internal thoracic artery and internal thoracic vein uh, because they are in the thoracic portion then through some gaps they are entering into the abdomen in the epigastric region in the upper portion of the epigastric region so in this region they are known as the superior epigastric vessels so the internal thoracic artery and its corresponding vein they are passing through a foramen into the superior epigastric region where where they became superior epigastric vessels and this foramen is the foramen of Morgagni so this model actually helps us a lot to understand the uh, clear picture of the course of this artery maybe this is why he's smiling so much anyways let's give him a goodbye and uh, let's get back to our presentation so we were here some information about this foramen this foramen is named for Giovanni Battista Morgagni an Italian anatomist generally regarded as the father of modern anatomical pathology who taught thousands of medical students from different countries during his 56 years as a professor of anatomy he noted this condition while performing a post-mortem examination on a person who died of a gangrenous colon which herniated through this foramen on his name this foramen is named as foramen of Morgagni another interesting fact Larry Napoleon's surgeon he described a surgical approach to the pericardial sac through this foramen that is why this foramen is also known as Larry's space so through this foramen we can approach to the pericardial sac uh, from the abdomen the whole this foramen is the foramen of Morgagni which is also known as the sternocostal foramen also known as the Larry's space now if we talk about the embryology then there is a defect in the anterior portion of the 
structures that are developing so uh, you know there is absence of the uh, of some portion in the anterior side or they do not fuse with each other in the anterior side that is why the uh, foramen of morgagnite persists yes this is it and unlike the boctaliconia which usually takes place on the left side this type of hernia they usually take place on the right side and herniation through this gap is very very uncommon but uh, it may take place if somehow this foramen becomes uh, too much dilated or um, somehow the intraabdominal pressure becomes too much high but this is very rare now how do we diagnose these cases CDH can often be diagnosed at the second trimester of the pregnancy by uh, routine ultrasound uh, which may reveal excessive amniotic fluid or the abdominal contents in the thoracic cavity and here we can see the amount of the amniotic fluid is more and the stomach is at the level of the heart it can be diagnosed earlier sometimes and sometimes it's not identified during the pregnancy at all to confirm the prenatal diagnosis of CDH doctors may perform a very detailed ultrasound and they may also conduct the fetal chromosomal study and uh, take measurements of the lung size as well now the treatment plan treatment usually starts after the baby is born the main problem is the hyperplasia of the lungs they are undersized and underdeveloped to function properly but the thing is in the fetus the functioning lung is not necessary because uh, in the amniotic fluid here while they are in the amniotic fluid in the uterus they do not breathe they take their oxygen or nutrition or whatever they need uh, through the placenta from the mother so the functioning lung is not necessary in case of this fetus but the problem arises when the baby is born and it starts breathing they will have troubled breathing because of the undersized and underdeveloped lungs in this case the child is first stabilized and taken to an ICU that is the neonatal intensive care unit and uh, also the pulmonary hypertension is corrected when the baby is stabilized then he or she is ready for the surgery the surgery is performed under general anesthesia the incision is usually given on the abdomen just below the rib cage to have a clear and better view of the diaphragm from below and uh, after that the abdominal contents they are pulled downwards back into their normal position so look at this picture uh, the intestines here we can see in the thoracic cavity so they are pulled downwards they are taken back to their normal anatomical position and we can see the hole now and then the hole is repaired and uh, if the hole is very small then only some sutures are given to repair the diaphragm and if the hole is very big then a patch is placed over the defect and the baby will heal within weeks to months and his or her lungs will continue to grow for years Lastly, in these cases, regular follow-up is necessary. So that is all I know about the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. I hope it helped you. That's it. Thank you very much for watching this video and having your patience. And if you are interested to know more about the hiatal hernia, then you can click on the video on the right side, uh, which I already made for you. And uh, I promise that video is made in a very simple way. So I think that will help you a lot and uh, yes if you think that these videos are helping you then please do subscribe my channel because it supports me a lot and also please give me a thumbs up on this video so stay safe everyone and thank you again and hope to see you all in my next video till then take care and goodbye